Hello. My name is Max Cates, and I am one of the authors on the study entitled Indications for a Intervention During Active Surveillance of Prostate Cancer, a comparison of the Johns Hopkins and Prius protocols that BJU has chosen to highlight in this week's issue. This study addressed a difficult and controversial problem in the field of prostate cancer. What should the criteria be for stopping active surveillance and intervening? A key task of a successful active surveillance protocol is to accurately identify patients with higher risk disease who should come off of protocols and receive treatment, while at the same time sparing patients uh, with low risk disease who may wish to maximize their quality of life. Currently, however, there is a lack of consensus regarding the best criteria for monitoring patients on active surveillance. At our institution, patients on active surveillance undergo annual prostate biopsy, while an alternative European-based Prius protocol involves a combination of PSA kinetics with less frequent prostate biopsies. Our objective, our objective was thus to highlight and analyze how patients enrolled in our biopsy-based active surveillance program would fare under the Prius protocol, which utilizes PSA kinetics. There are a few points of the paper that I would like to highlight. Over a median of 2.1 years of follow-up and a cohort of 1,125 patients, 38% of men in the Johns Hopkins Active Surveillance Program experienced biopsy reclassification. When we analyzed which biopsies discovered reclassification, we found that 62% of men who reclassified were detected at biopsy intervals corresponding to the Prius criteria, while 16% were detected between scheduled Prius biopsies. This resulted in a median delay in detection of 1.9 years. Of 202 patients with greater than five years of follow-up, 11% of men in the Johns Hopkins program were found to have biopsy reclassification after it would have been identified in the Prius protocol. This resulted in a median delay of 4.7 years to reclassification. 12% of, of patients who would have undergone immediate intervention under Prius due to abnormal PSA kinetics would never have undergone reclassification in the Johns Hopkins protocol, and thus would never have undergone definitive intervention. I think the reader should appreciate that there are clear differences between the way active surveillance is undertaken in different institutions and different practice settings. These differences in protocol do lead to appreciable differences in the rate of prostate cancer reclassification and the time to intervention. It remains to be seen how prostate cancer quality of life and survival are affected by differences in active surveillance practices. And ultimately, this question will be key as efforts are made to improve active surveillance practices worldwide.